Hello everyone, welcome to another video by your Oyster Mushroom Expert. Today's video is part of our series called What's Wrong With My Mushrooms, where we help explain some of the problems you may be having with your mushroom growing. In today's episode, we'll talk about what that white stuff growing on your oyster mushrooms might be. By the way, there's a comprehensive article about oyster mushroom diseases on my website. However, it's worth noting that most issues with mushroom appearance aren't caused by diseases, but rather by improper climate conditions. I've learned that about half of the time, the environment in the growing room holds the answer to the question, what's wrong with my mushrooms? For example, in this photo, the growing chamber temperature was around seven to 10 degrees Celsius or about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, with a humidity level of 90%. This combination of low temperature and high humidity explains why these mushrooms look the way they do. To understand the white network on the caps, it's important to know that the mushrooms release their moisture through the caps and gills, but at low temperatures and high humidity, this process slows down and the mushrooms aren't able to release moisture quickly enough. As a result, they alter their shape to increase their evaporation surface. Typically, this leads to the gills expanding while the stems thicken. In about 30% of the cases, however, a white coating appears on the cap. This is likely due to various factors combining in different ways. When temperature and humidity fluctuate in the growing chamber, the chance of seeing this kind of white tissue increases. Under these conditions, it's hard to predict the exact type of deformation. For example, if this cluster grew at night when it was colder, the cap would start to expand. Then the day warms up and the humidity drops, causing the cap to tear in places. This happens because the moisture builds up in the cap tissues and then the mushroom cannot release it at night due to the cold and high humidity leading to cell rupture. The top layer of the cap then starts growing over the dead cells forming this network. It is also possible that this white coating is secondary mycelium rather than regrowth of cap tissue. I have a photo in my collection that looks similar. Here, the growths are the same color as the cap, but darker. In the images sent to me, the growths appear white. My guess is that in both cases, the cap skin initially tore because the mushroom couldn't evaporate its own moisture. But in the second case, with the white netted pattern, for some reason, mycelium started growing over the area. This seems likely as mushrooms will try various ways to adapt and survive in such conditions. Here's another photo. Take a look at this primordium, also called pins. It's entirely covered in white scales and the cap of the mushroom has already begun to deform. Now look at these small mushrooms. Their caps are smooth and rounded. However, they are covered in white streaks that resemble deep scars. So, if we improve the climate conditions now by raising the temperature a bit and lowering the humidity, both primordia will grow into good mushrooms. However, the scars on these mushrooms will remain. They will become less noticeable, but they won't disappear completely. On the other hand, these mushrooms won't have any scales as those will disappear. The mushroom grower who sent me this photo mentioned that these scales washed away even under a hose. This is why I believe that these are dead cells from the mushroom skin. This upper layer of cells ruptured due to uneven growth of the cap caused by suboptimal growing conditions. Here, the damage to the cells was so significant that the mushrooms seem to have stitched up the ruptures in the cap, forming a seam that looks like a scar. It's possible that this tissue indeed resembles mycelium in structure. Many people ask, why is it also cold in my growing room, yet mushrooms show no such changes? The answer, as mentioned earlier, lies in the combination of climate factors. 
In our next photo, the room was cold. It was also cold outside at minus 5 degrees Celsius or 23 degrees Fahrenheit. The mushroom grower had to turn off the ventilation at night, which caused the carbon dioxide levels to rise. You can see that some of the mushrooms have slightly elongated stems. This means that this particular mushroom grew at night during the period of high CO2, which is why its stem is stretched. Conversely, this mushroom in the cluster likely grew earlier, so its stem appears normal. The likelihood of such growths on the cap significantly increases with the combination of three factors, high humidity, low temperature, and periodic increases in carbon dioxide levels. In such unfavorable conditions, the mycelium tries to survive and starts to develop on the cap, forming what appears to be a white substance. How can this be corrected? This is a challenging situation. The humidity in this growing room is currently at 90%. I recommend reducing the humidity to at least 86 to 87%. However, this presents another challenge. As humidity decreases at low temperatures, the mushrooms become dry and somewhat sticky. The only advice I can give is to try increasing the air temperature in the chamber. There is a range for mushroom survival and a range for normal mushroom growth. In this case, I would suggest switching the ventilation to full recirculation, adding only 10% fresh air, and not turning on the exhaust fan. Air recirculation is when the fan draws air from the grow room rather than from outside and returns that air back into the grow room through ducts. If the ventilation is set up correctly with an airflow speed from the air vents of 7 to 8 meters per second or 23 to 26 feet per second, this should help. The most important thing for us is to remove moisture and carbon dioxide from the mushroom clusters. And with proper ventilation, air exchange accomplishes this task, even at 10 degrees Celsius or 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Moreover, if we don't let in too much outside air, the temperature in the growing room will rise, even if the water going through the radiator is 35 degrees C or 95 Fahrenheit. An increase in temperature by just 1 or 2 degrees is valuable, and at 11 C or 52 Fahrenheit, the quality of the mushrooms will improve. Oyster mushrooms with the white netted pattern on the cap are edible and can be sold, but this will be challenging as you'll need to convince the buyer that they are fine. The author of the Oyster Mushroom Expert channel has prepared resources for growers, ready-made ventilation calculations in electronic format, and a guide for installing the equipment. These solutions are designed for large growing rooms with more than one ton of substrate. The ventilation setup is suitable for regions with cold winters and hot dry summers. You can read more about the guide on the website, which you can get through the link in the first comment. That's all for today, and so we say much love, and we will see you next time here on your Oyster Mushroom Expert channel.